All right, all right, all right, let's try this. Whoa. Oh, that looks a lot better, don't you think? Today, I'm gonna be going over filters, this K&F concept right here. So I'm gonna really mount it to the camera and not just hold it up like this, but stay tuned. This is what we're going over today, woo! What's up? And if you're new to this channel, my name is Paul. I run a channel that inspires other creators that your future is whatever you make it. And today, I finally have got outside out of my box and in my studio, and I'm reviewing this KNF Concepts Variable ND filter. I did use it on a few videos. If you knew my Tamron 17 to 28 video where I'm going crazy dancing outside, I don't think I'm gonna do that right now. You, you can see it and link it up here in the top corner. And it was the first time I ever used this filter. I was using it outside. It's a decent filter and a very affordable filter to use outside. But today, what I want to do is I want to compare it to what the camera sees without a filter by increasing the aperture, just so, so you guys can compare the colors and see what it looks like. With Without that but right now I'm using the ND filter on ND 32 which is the max ohm on the five stop this filter goes from ND 2 to ND 32 so it's a five stop ND filter you know pretty good I probably could use a little bit more out here just for a little bit more control but I'm on the max I'm maxing it out right now and I'm, I'm sure it's gonna help it enough to get me a, a good quality image well, I guess we'll find out when I edit it I'm also shooting um, HLG 2 on the Sony a7 III. All right, and this is with no filter whatsoever. This is the same exact setup, same exact spot, just the f-stop has been increased to f11, and this should be giving me the exact same uh, exposure setup as with the filter on it on ND32 and the max five stops for this k &F concept. Can you see a color difference? I mean, we'll see from the monitor, it, I can't really tell that much of a difference, but we'll see when we get it into the editor and we'll know for sure. All right, so now I have the filter back on it and I kind of compensated the aperture a little bit. This is very helpful to have an ND filter so that I can keep my aperture as low as possible on these bright sunny days. Obviously, I'd probably want the higher ND filter um, for this setting and I, you know it'd be nice to have both for both occasions but I only have one so this is what kind of what that looks like. Do you like this indie filter? I don't know. Alright so I'm back here in the studio and I had a chance to look over the footage and here's a few things that I did notice with the filter. One, I did not clean it very well. There was like a slight like green ball smudge somewhere around my chin or something. That's another downside of using a filter is not only do you have to make sure your sensor is clean and your lenses are clean, but you also have to do a third step of making sure that your filter is clean. And I did clean it, but obviously I didn't notice that I didn't clean it very well. So there is a little bit of a smudge there. It is just the filter. I could immediately tell which one was which, um, not from the depth of view, which I could tell that there, the background is a lot blurrier on the one with the filter, but the first thing that I noticed was that the filter was slightly, like, gr had a green cast to it. It wasn't much, but there is a little bit of a green cast to it. The, uh, the, the other thing I did notice with the filter is you can slightly see there is a little bit of vignetting on the edges. So, those are some things to consider when you're looking at getting a filter. Is the Peter McKinnon one better? Yes. How much better? Unfortunately, I do not know because I don't have that filter, but I will tell you that I don't think it vignettes as badly, but this wasn't terrible. You could just slightly tell that the corners were a little bit darker than on the one without the filter on it. There's another thing you can notice when you look at the images is that the sky is still slightly blown out in the one without the filter. That's where the filter really helps just calm down the entire image there. And you could not see if the sky blown out with the one with the filter in it. And it's just because the filter is helping cut all that down. Plain and simple. Increasing the aperture really only does so much. Maybe if I would have increased the aperture just a little bit more, that sky would have been blown out. But the readings were coming out the same like on the histogram and everything 
on the camera. So the filters are super nice and super good to have when shooting video. The quality on the KNF is not bad at all. So for 50 bucks, I would suggest it, sure. I can see why the hype is big. I don't know why the hype is like so big. I mean, it doesn't, it's, it's good. It's a good quality filter, but I don't think it like blows away some of the other competition. But for the price, I mean, you're getting a, a quality you know, filter. If I, I would say if somebody didn't want to spend $100, $200 on a filter, I think the KNF is a great compromise and it's a great other option. Yeah, it's 50 bucks. So the Peter McKinnon one is 200. Another brand that actually has a really decent filter that I'd love to get my hands on is Freewell. So Freewell, if you see this video, I did try to get this filter from KNF. Sent on an email, waited like a week or something like that, and said, "Forget it, I'm gonna buy it because I needed it." When it, it's it's a decent filter for 50 bucks, you really can't go wrong. I've heard though that the Freewell is like 96 to 98 percent as good as the Peter McKinnon, and for that price difference, it's like half the price of the Peter McKinnon one. It's a pretty good deal. You for the same price as one Peter McKinnon filter, you can get both sets of ND stops from Freewell. So that's a pretty good deal. I would like to compare it, but maybe I'll get one in the future and, and I will do that for you. The good thing about the filter though is it does have those hard stops just like the Peter McKinnon, just like the Freewell. So you, you'll know where each of your stops are and it won't go any further. You can go to your minimum and you go to your maximum without wondering where that is. It stops are on each end. So that's nice. Worth the $50 to me, I wouldn't hesitate to pick one up if you're in the market for a cheap filter. There are cheaper filters out there, but I've never used them, and they do get a lot more color changes when you go on that cheap, but they still work, so I would probably deal with it over not having one, and just do the tweaking in post to get your image looking a little bit more accurate, but overall, been very happy with this filter. If you like this video, please subscribe, do all the fun YouTube -y things, and I will see you in the future.